Hello and welcome to another video, folks. Uh, today we're going to learn about behavioral modeling. In many of my videos, I have already, uh, you know, described how to design a digital system using data flow modeling or structural modeling. But one of the uh, other technique to describe a digital system in Verilog is behavioral modeling. And in this method, digital system at hand is represented by its behavior. Uh, in other words, Verilog keywords corresponding to conditional and recursive statements can be used within the model. And in this tutorial, we're going to do a small example of it's basically just a NAND gate and an inverter gate that we are going to design using the two inputs, as I mentioned over here, as input one and input two. For the sake of time, I've already did the, the coding, uh, created a project. If you are very new to my channel, I'll leave a link in the description to some of the very basics about how to get started with FPGAs or basis report if you have one. In the behavioral modeling, you'll have statements. So over here, what you see over here, these will be considered as statements. And these statements are to be executed should there be any triggered, should they be triggered by any signal or it could as the signal could be uh, make not just one signal it could be two signals and when i say triggered or you know uh, a signal basically means that it will have the input one over here and input two these are being used as switches as an in inputs and whenever there is a change in the logic of these switches your output will respond to that change yeah. in input so one of the important thing over here is this line number 31 what's going on over here the keyword here is always at and it is used to indicate this triggering operation once the signal changes its state the statement is going to be executed if there's more than one statement which is the case over here then they should be encapsulated by begin and end, just like I have over here. So just remember in behavioral modeling, you're gonna have the always at statement. In the parenthesis, you're gonna have this, what we refer to as, as a sensitivity list. And this stands for triggering signals. The sensitivity list can be formed of signals separated by a comma, which I've done over here. So say if I have another input as input three, I will say input three and then so on like input three here like that and then so on right but since i have only two inputs i'm just gonna keep it as is if the behavioral description is to be executed for any input changes then asterisk sign can also be used for example in this case the output is dependent upon both inputs and input one and input two so instead of saying input one comma input two, you can also just use an asterisk sign, which will just by default include all the inputs that has been uh, identified here, right? So this is also fine. If you want to do like this, it's also fine. But in some cases, you're going to have so many inputs. And if all of them, you know, have an impact on, on output in some way, then you'd rather use the asterisk sign over here. Here, whenever one of the signal in, in the sensitivity list changes its state, the behavioral description is executed. Anytime there's a change in the sensitivity list, this signal is triggered. These two lines are going to be executed. Uh, and that is because your output one is dependent upon your input one and input two. Uh, and notice over here, this is an end gate and the output two is basically the inward of out one so essentially together they make a nand gate one other important thing the verilog keyword for behavioral model modeling is the initial which we see over here in the test bench file that i created so you right click here you add a source and then you create a test bench file which i already have created over here you see this initial because i have multiple statements over here I want to initialize by setting a value to those inputs one and two as zero zero. And this is basically after 10 nanoseconds, the input one will change from zero to one and input two stays as is, which is zero. After 10 nanoseconds, the input two will then change from zero to one 
and input one will stay as is follow it up by end because you had begin over here and follow it up by end module you can have a few more statements if you like but i just wanted to have try a couple of different combinations and verify my digital system we can represent the relationship between the input and output of the system over here as we did in the data flow modeling however if you look at over here we are not really using the assign keyword it will not be used in behavioral modeling since there is one more than one statement to be executed they are encapsulated with begin within begin and end so remember that and just know that if there was only one statement say there was only going to be one statement you do not the, need this end or begin if there's only just one statement but if there are multiple statement you also make sure you are you embed them within a begin and end so the test bench file is ready it's pretty much simple i can go through it one more time remember i told you that declaring inputs as registers and then you declare all your inputs as wires i copy pasted it so i forgot to make the change and then also after that you instantiate the module which is the behavioral model make sure it's you know spelled the way it, it is appears over here and also the order of the IO port should follow this order. So you got two inputs, two outputs. I have my two inputs and two outputs, right? And then follow it up by, we wanna provide the initial input to the switches, those would, those would be zero, zero. After 10 seconds, they change their state and so on. Once you have the code ready, you go ahead, click here, you run synthesis, I've already run the synthesis. As you can see, there's a green flag right here, green check mark right here. Once you do that, you should be able to see the schematic. You click over here. As I was telling you, the two inputs basically go into an end gate. The output is, go, uh, is going into an inverter. And that makes it a sort of like a uh, NAND gate. So output two is a NAND gate and output one is an end gate right pretty simple logic just wanted to show you like how you do it how you do the coding in verilog using behavioral modeling and if you run simulation so here it is okay so if you look over here i'm gonna move this yellow line over here here input one input zero both are zero zero as you know that output one is the end gate so zero zero makes zero but because both inputs are same the logic gate for the NAND gate says both inputs are same output is going to be one and notice here the output one and output two are always going to be the complement of each other because they make end gate and NAND gate right similarly over here input one is being one input two is zero one zero makes a logic for the end gate zero but NAND gate is going to be one the two outputs are invert of each other and then one the last logic I implemented was when both inputs are high, that means the logic gate N is gonna produce an output one, but NAND gate is gonna produce zero. And again, the two outputs are complement of each other. So I hope that you feel comfortable with behavioral modeling. I have done tons of projects already in this playlist where I do make projects and I've used behavioral modeling. I just wanted to give you a quick basic tutorial on how to get started on behavioral modeling, which is one of the ways to design a circuit in very long. Enjoy your rest of the day. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Bye.